ಶ್ರೀಯತಿರಾಜಾ ವಿವೇಕಾನಂದಶೂರ ಸಚ್ಚೀತ್ಸುಖಸ್ವೂಪಾ ಸ್ವಾಪಿಣೇತಾಪಹಾರಿಣೆ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಅವರ್ ಸಲ್ಯೂಟೇಷನ್ ಟು ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ವಿವೇಕಾನಂದ ದ ಕಿಂಗ್ ಅಮಾಂಗ್ ದಿ ರಿನಾನ್ಸಿಯಟ್ಸ್ ಹೂ ಇಸ್ ದೇರ್ ಎಂಬಾಡಿಮೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಸಚ್ಚಿದಾನಂದ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಹೂ ಇಸ್ ಬಾರ್ನ್ ಟು ರಿಮೂವ್ ದಿ ಸಫರಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ಹ್ಯುಮ್ಯಾನಿಟಿ ಆರ್ ರೆಫರೆನ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಪ್ರೊನಾಮ್ಸ್ ಟು ಹಿಮ್ ಓಂ ಪೀಸ್ 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 ಪಿಯರ್ ಟು ಅಸ್ ಓಂ ಸೊ ಟುಡೇ ವಿ ಅವರ್ ಟಾಪಿಕ್ ಆಸ್ ಎಸ್ ಇನ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಸೆಟ್ ಬೈ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಧ್ಯಾನಯೋಗಾನಂದ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ವಿವೇಕಾನಂದ ಮಿಷನ್ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ವಿವೇಕಾನಂದ ಹ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಎ ಮಿಷನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಎ ವಿಷನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದಟ್ ಮಿಷನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವಿಷನ್ ಇಸ್ ವೆರಿ ಸ್ಪೆಷಲ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಬುದ್ಧ ದೆ ಡು ನಾಟ್ ಪ್ಲ್ಯಾನ್ like an ordinary person to do something that you do con create some organization but it is they come and live a high spiritual life for the good of humanity and they leave their life behind and their great message which will inspire people for ages together and lead everyone to the goal of freedom this ramak we are part of ramakrishna mission in india we call ramakrishna mission here we call it vedanta society so this vedanta society or ramakrishna mission is in the name of ramakrishna but ramakrishna did not actually a created in the sense as we understand any corporate structure is created ramakrishna is a mad for god realization nothing is any value to him and he did his intense spiritual practice and attain the end result of all spiritual practice as god realization in so many ways and paths as human history has traveled and he wanted that every one of us should focus our life and the goal and our mission to that end that's why he lived that life and after his attainment of his ultimate realizations following all different paths then what he did he wanted to find some suitable people who will be able to receive his message that pure souls who are who are being hungry for god whose life is meaningless without that experience of the highest so he was crying first he cried for god realization god lo mother god as mother god as father in all possible ways he attained the same realization and then he wanted and cried for people to come who will get this message and unconsciously his call reached the pure hearts and mother the divine mother sent brought boys of young boys pure hearted pure soul and they gathered around ramakrishna and what they did they did engage in deep spiritual practice when they came to ramakrishna noren rakhal baburam these are young boys very pure in soul the world and worldliness has not touched their heart and when they came they were trained 
to do meditation, prayer and lead a high level of spiritual life. He would send them to at night, wake, him, wake them up and, and then said, go and meditate to the temple, go to the temple and meditate, go to the bank of the Ganga, do meditate there, go into the deep forest there and, and that realization, God realization was the goal of them. And he created a Sangha as Buddha created a Sangha. That's why the prayer in Buddhism is Buddham Saranam Gachami. I take refuge in Buddha. Shangham Saranam Gachami. The organization, that Sangha, I refuge in that, take refuge in that. And Dharmam and, the, and the, all the spiritual teachings, I follow that. So Ramakrishna unconsciously created a group of brilliant, bright, extremely pure souls fit for this God-realization and they attain the highest experiences of spiritual life, attain to the Nirvikalpa Samadhi all and, and gathered them together around him. Not in a planned way, as I said, but it spontaneously it happened. And they fell in love with Ramakrishna, the pure love, innocent love, where there is no desire for gain of anything. Normal love we have in give and take, but it is all giving and giving. It is such pure love that that purity is not available in the world. So these boys gathered around and Sri Ramakrishna got the cancer, as you all know, throat cancer. Some say taking the sins of those people who came around, gathered around him, taking their negative activities, negative actions and make them free. And he suffered like Christ suffered. So, and, but even in that mood, Sri Ramakrishna is always in ecstasy, highest ecstasy, and lifting the mind of all these boys in a higher level. And Naren being the leader of them, Vivekananda, started inspiring everyone to get the highest realization now and here, while Sri Ramakrishna is there, and that in their highest. And then his throat cancer became very severe and they needed 24 hours service. These boys gave up their school, college, learning, everything, gathered, centered around Ramakrishna out of the attraction of pure love and God. They all served Sri Ramakrishna day and night, 24 hours. And thereby they created a Sangha, an organization. Organization not in that, as I again say, not the terminology we understand in that way organization, but centered around Ramakrishna, a love relationship for the great mission of God-realization. And there we find Sri Ramakrishna is training them. And is particularly this Naren, Vivekananda, that he is making him prepared for a great mission. One day he called, Ramakrishna called when he was before his leaving the body. The cancer is so aggravated. In those days there was no treatment of cancer. And no pain management was not like today's. He suffered so much. But he was always cheerful, always joyful, always in a high mood of ecstatic joy. And then one day Sri Ramakrishna called this Naren, future Vivekananda, and called him and touched him and Naren went into ecstasy and when he came back after that experience Naren came back to the outer consciousness saw that Sri Ramakrishna is full of tears rolling down the cheeks and Naren asked what has happened then Ramakrishna said Naren I have become a beggar I have given away all my spiritual assets and experiences all to you. 
with this force with this purity with this power he will do good to the whole world and he also wrote norin will preach so this is the ramakrishna is not a man yes in a human form but a consummation of all the spiritual modes of reaching god all embodiment of all spiritual ideals he in his sadhana in his spiritual practice become so ingrained into it, deep into it in the history we didn't find such life where so many ways of spirit, spiritual journey has been completed in one person and that accumulated tremendous spiritual power which she had transferred to sami vivekananda that's why sami vivekananda is to say in later on that is only me i am the i'm just speaking but he speaks through me it is nothing me there is no personal ego of vivekananda there is god's ego flowing through him there we find actually that is the ramakrishna order has been created there the sri ramakrishna's health condition deteriorating and now when he passed away then sri ramakrishna appeared before noren and said are i have left the body and you should gather all the young boys again and get engrossed into your spiritual journey again and he also appeared before a great devotee whose name was suren mitra and he appeared and said suren used to give some money for my expenses rent for the house and other expenses needed for food and other things why not you give that same now and two people then got the same direction from sri ramakrishna and met together and that is the beginning of the monastery we called varanagar monastery that monastery was started in a dilapidated house because the cheap and ghost house so no one will rent it so cheapest price can be available so with that they can manage to be there and that was the place belur mot or this whole organization ramakrishna movement started there and that time there is no idea that there will be an organization and then they stepped into dive deep again into their spiritual practices so intense they don't care about what food is available sometimes they have no food whole day and night there is no food because they don't go out they are only engaged in their spiritual practice what they got from ramakrishna making it more intense and intense and deep and deep and profound and then this organization started in that way and vivekananda brahmananda and all of them ramakrishna gave them some during his lifetime some gerua cloth this okar cloth to these most of the devotees disciples you can say that is a he has conferred this monastic uh sangha's idea in this way by distributing this okar cloth but this organization is growing is a spiritual organization there is nothing but god in to its beginning its end and its practice so swami vivekananda then gathered together and also he is searching for god and wanted to go to the length and breadth of india and found the condition of india and saw that there is tremendous potential power the spiritual energy is lurking behind the poverty the the hunger the poverty the rest rest wretched condition of india under that rule british rule but there is the spirituality which is hidden so he felt that call and you know then he met the richest people of the country the kings down to the people who are in the street and he saw the condition 
and wanted to make a bridge, a create a world civilization. And that civilization should be exchanging the best of this East and the West and a new civilization, new religion. He wanted to create that religion. And then he came to this country and what he preached, that is the mission. What is mission? His mission is to confer the spiritual truth which is hidden in us to awaken that as just a quote what you just heard he said that my ideal what he preached in this country this country where we were thinking of sin and sinners Vivekananda brought this message his mission that you are divine and you have to manifest the divinity in every action of your life that was Vivekananda's mission. That was the mission of Ramakrishna to awaken the divinity in us, the God consciousness in us and manifest in every moment of life. That's why he says, my ideal indeed can be put into few words and that is to preach unto mankind their divinity. We all have divinity. This is a new message. And that is the how to preach through it how to preach this idea to the world that he created in an organization later on. But his main purpose, his inner calling was to go from length and breadth of the country to length and breadth of the world to preach this message that you are divine, you are divine. In you is the potential spirit. Just manifest it, unfold it, arise, awake. All these ideas, awake, awake, great ones. The world is burning with misery. Can you sleep? Let us call and call till the sleeping gods awake, till the God within answers to the call. What more is in life? What great work? That was his mission. He's calling awake, awake in all of us. He's not talking about India. It's not talking about one particular country or a particular group of people, men or women, not. It's the whole humanity is his call. So for the whole world, that is his call. What? Awake, awake. Great ones. You are all great. We are all great by your very divine level, by divine existence. Who can give us that dignity? In our life, we feel always we are depressed. We are, we are always little. We are petty. Because we, as, if, as human beings, we have our limitation. We are that so small. And here is Vivekananda giving us the human dignity. You are all divine. You are all pure. You have all power inside it. Manifest that power. Manifest that power. So it is a just a great contribution. And that, that message is to be preached through certain organization. That's why his message, he said one time while he was in this country, that he said, that once, that is a uh, reminiscences of Cornelia Congar, she said that once he said to my grandmother, her grandmother met Swami Vivekananda and were close to her, um, him. And once he, means Vivekananda, said to my grandmother that she had the greatest temptation of his life in America. And she, that's his grandmother, liked to tease Vivekananda Swami a bit and said, Who is she, Swami? Then he, means Vivekananda, burst out laughing and said, Oh, ho, it is not a lady, it is an organization. What he said here, that he wanted coming in this country, seeing the organized activity of these people here, he felt that, you know, we need some organization. Organization has its bad side. Politics comes, ego comes, fight comes, and the spirituality sometimes gets sidetracked. But without organization even, nothing good can be done. 
Look at India. Millions of monks are there, holy people. They don't care for anything of material world. But they're individual spiritual people. Begging some little food, not caring for money, wealth, prosperity, anything of the world. And these spiritual people are hundreds roaming around, thousands there, here and there. In the cave, in the Himalaya, in the, on the bank of Ganga, on the bank of Narmada, on the, the holy land. But no impact. That because of that, when the British used to rule India, they said it is all savage religion. They used to call Indian religion savage religion. They are idol worshippers. They are worshipping stones and then trees and plants. So they are uncivilized people. No? So that was the concept. But deep spirituality, because they don't care for name and fame. They don't, they don't care for anything of the world. That if they are integrated together, then that would have been a tremendous force. That's why Swami Vivekananda fell in love with organization. That's why he is starting from here, writing letters to his brother monks, sit together, start working and make it manifest that, that practical Vedanta is to be priest. We are born to do that. Don't be looking at yourself. Forget your own salvation. Think of others' self salvation first and next you. That's why some people begin to say, may I be born again and again to ameliorate the sufferings of others. Others is who is in other. That's the Vedanta. It's me. So that's why Swami Vivekananda organized this in 1897, May 1, in Calcutta, after his first return to India. And he organized a call, called a meeting in Calcutta, and in the house of Mr. Balaram Bose, and, and called twin forces, the monastic force, as also the householders who came and lived under Ramakrishna, who realized God themselves, who were in the household life at the same time realized the highest knowledge, made a meeting of all together and this Ramakrishna mission was organized and that started. That was in, as I say, 1897, May 1. This year is 125th year of the sustenance of this monastic order. That's why we have taken this topic to think about the journey of 125 years of this monastic organization. Few monks, penniless monks, with a zeal inside, with the spirit of manifesting the divinity within and serving, bringing the same message to whoever we come across. And that has started this organization. It started with, when it started, it was a very little stream, as it were. It's non-existent. Now you go to India, all over India you call Ramakrishna Mission. Everyone knows that. Just go and Google search. This year's booklet has come, report book. A report book, this has become this thick book. What is that? They're talking about the activity. Activity what? This Hollywood center, uh, we have a Trobuco branch. It is, you will find five or six lines there. That's one, one center's activity is only five, six lines. And you know how is this center whole year doing. And this is the entire book is like this thick. Working for the good of humanity. Serving people in all strata. And principle is to serve the divine in all. That's why the, the quotation what we have repeated again, to preach unto mankind their divinity and how to make it manifest in every movement of life. Big theories are there. What it matters? 
big talks, big philosophy. Can it be practical? Can it be used in my life? Can you apply for your wife, for your husband, for your children, for your son, for your neighboring people? Can you see God there? Can you serve them thinking that you are getting an opportunity to serve God there? As the twin ideal of this order, this Ramakrishna mission, which is actually we have named this Vivekananda mission, because Ramakrishna did not in that sense create the mission, though he is the root of all this. And actually it is he who has entered into Vivekananda, as I just told you. Uh, that Sri Ramakrishna poured his all spiritual energy into Vivekananda. And with that power he came in this country and the whole world. Uh, he conquered the whole world, not like an emperor, uh, but with a spiritual force. And it is a driving force for the whole world now, this Advaita Vedantic idea non-dual state of oneness with all. And he says, stand up and express the divinity within you. That is his message, that is his mission, that is Ramakrishna's mission. So this Swami Vivekananda started this mission and it channeled to the one idea in the East, another for the West. Here we need spiritual education, spiritual culture, Going to church in a weekend does not make anyone spiritual. It's a serious task. Every day's business, every day meditation, every moment, morning, evening, night meditation, trying to see the divine in others in every action. 24 hours of spirituality is necessary to get a degree in the school. A boy or a girl spend hours and hours eh, sacrificing their all fun and joy. But spirituality can be got just going to say that I attended the church and come back and remain the same old guy. So his mission is that no, it is to be transmitted and it's had, it's, it is to be reorganized in every moment of our life, every expression will manifest that we are divine. Our behavior should change. Our character should change. Our response, response to the other people should change in a level which is called divine level. So that was that, that he wanted to preach a religion. That mission. What is the mission? Mission is that a great mission we have never heard of such great mission of anyone. Normally people talk about, even the great sages and saints, when they talk, they talk about their own religion. When parliament of world religion happened in 1893, all the religious leaders of the ten denominations, major denominations, they spoke of their own religion, how their own religion is greater than anyone. It is Vivekananda only one who spoke for the, all the global religion. That's why his beautiful words are there. I like this quote where he says that we want to lead mankind to the place where there is neither the Vedas, nor the Bible, nor the Quran. Yet this has to be done by harmonizing the Vedas, the Bible and the Quran. Because we are stuck into the Vedas and Bibles, do's and don'ts. Quran says this, I am a Muslim, I'll have to follow this. Bible says this, this is my religion, and this is done, then I am religion. No. But to go beyond the Vedas, beyond the Bible, beyond, because truth, Vedas and Bibles are expression of the truth. Truth is much higher than, than that of expression. Therefore, Swami Vivekananda's mission is a great mission. It is a world mission. It does not restrict anyone with the men or women, it is all of this country or that country, it is universal all over the globe. So he says, mankind ought to be taught. Mankind, not man, not woman, mankind ought to be taught that the religions are the varied expressions of the religion. There is only one religion, that is God. That is the only religion which is to be experienced. 
That is the divinity within. And that is the oneness. And that is the religion. And which is oneness? What is the religion? In his own language, it is the oneness. You and me, in the physical body we are separate. In the mental level we are emotional. Some are more emotional, some are more intellectual. All variations. But in the essence back of that, that infinite consciousness behind all of us. That oneness, unity, oneness. That is the core of all. So which is oneness. So that each may choose the path that suits him best. So paths are only journey, for journey. But path is not the end. End of the path is the goal. The spiritual journey should end in that oneness. The religion, only religion, that is oneness of human existence. And that can be done only by power. Swami Vivekananda expresses, this is great fact. Strength is life. Weakness is death. Strength is felicity. Life eternal, immortal. Weakness is constant strain and misery. Weakness is death. Forgetting about God. If we are become weak and weak every day in life, where is spirituality? Where is our strength? That's why Swami Vivekananda says, before going to God, be strong, be powerful. Not arrogant, not egotistic, but strength in your own divine self, what is within. Stand up, be bold, be strong. Take the whole responsibility on your own shoulders and know that you are the creator of your own destiny. All the strength and succor you want is within you. So this is the message. This is the message, this is the mission to arouse, to ignite this fire in all the people in the world, men, women. Come out. What a great call. Come out into the universe of light. The whole world is, there is a light behind this gloomy appearance of the world. Everything in the universe belongs to you, is yours. Stretch out your arms and embrace it with love. If you ever felt you wanted to do that, you have felt God. What a call. It is, it is a non-denominational approach. It is not saying follow Hinduism, follow Christianity, follow Islam or not do this, that. It is saying that come out into the universe of light. We live not in the world of light. We live in the world of darkness, arrogance, fight, conflict, dissension. And where is the light? There is light behind, behind, behind everything is the substratum, is the consciousness, substratum is the Vedantic oneness. So it says, everything in the universe is yours. I think you are separate from me. I hate you. I love you. All these things are happening because I am separate, you are separate. But in the background, that infinite oneness is there and the whole world belongs to you. That is the God, or me. In my real me, not this petty me, not this petty I. So stretch out your arms and embrace it, the whole universe with love. What a great mission. Who can give this idea? Not thinking very little, vast, widespread thought and it is all pervaded state of awareness. If you have May I be born again and again and suffer thousands of miseries so that I may worship the only God that exists, the only God I believe in, which is the sum total of all souls. So, you see, I will be born again and again. That was the mission of Vivekananda. He said, I may be born again and again, like Buddha. It's called the Bodhisattva state, no? They come again and again, is born again for the good of humanity. But what is the cause? Cause that the, and I may suffer thousands of miseries, it is Vivekananda saying, so that I may worship. What is the purpose? Not for any other motive, 
but only one purpose to worship the only God. What is that God? That exists. And that is the God I believe in. Who is that God? Some total of all souls. Uh, all of us standing on the platform or the base of that infinite reality. Then you look at the ocean. All the waves and ripples, billions and trillions of ripples and waves standing on the ground of the ocean. That oneness. That is the one identity behind our varied existence. And that is the mission of Swami Vivekananda. And for that reason, he <laughs> proposed two ideas. One for, he said that I have a mission for the West, as Buddha has a mission for the East. So what was his mission? His mission was this grand call of divinity. Ye children of divine, huh? ye are this ye children of divinity. Sinners, it is a sin to call a man sinner. And could you believe that when he spoke all these words in 1893 around that, what is the condition in this country? Uh, it was a very troublesome and, and difficult situation if anyone could utter these words against the churches. And actually he was given to drink poison. Detroit was given to drink poison because this philosophy what he is talking is it goes against all normal routine life of church life and others. No? Here he says, have the courage to say, ye are divine, ye children of divine bliss. What type of call is this? So he has the mission. This mission on for this country or the West to talk about the divinity because they have the physical achievements are there, money, wealth, etc., good living, all these things are available. Spirituality is the hunger there and that should be given. That's why in this country all the Vedanta societies, what they do, you all know. Talking about Vedantic truth, the principle. Huh? That we are all pure, we are all divine by our very basic nature. That is hammered here again and again. It is to awaken the divine consciousness. But in India, his message is little different. He says, same, goal is the same. He said that India has enough of religion. You will be surprised to go to see a person, illiterate person, knows nothing about your, he cannot write, read and write even in his, uh, this, his signature, no? I met once, and I am talking about now 50 years back, half a century back. <laughs> uh, and he was, he, he was our gardener, he used to do the garden work. He does not know, he didn't go to school or anything, only he knows gardening. And he, when I met, and he, one day he was talking about Patanjali Yoga. All the steps of yoga, all the chakra meditation, how the chakra meditation can be done, and he does practice every day. They are materially they are poor, but spiritually they are so rich. How many of us know how the chakras are there and how many chakras to be lifted from one? We go to now many schools of thought is coming here. But a person, illiterate person, have hand-to-mouth food or may get or may not get, but knows about spirituality. So Swami Vivekananda said, India does not need spirituality. It needs food. It needs money. He no need some clothing, some way to live. So that's why the activities in India, this same Ramakrishna order he designed, started with orphanage, started with education, healthcare, disaster relief, and all types of people in any condition, in any suffering. This Ramakrishna mission, Swamis, and with the help of the devotees, they go and they help them from there, that level. That is the service. And that will give them little freedom to think about what is their religion. So, uplift of India, he suggested for technical education and other things. Now, of course, time has changed. All the world has become more close. And this exchange has really happened now. 
Uh, here we are hearing the highest Vedantic schools of thought, how many institutions are going on, not only this Vedanta society is outside also. And there also, how much technology has gone, extent, it is Sami Vivekananda's wish to man, getting manifested. So we find that Sri Ramakrishna actually started this mission and this mission was injected unconsciously into the life of Swami Vivekananda and his direct disciples. How to make it practical? We cannot believe that it is possible to bring Vedanta into your practical life. Swami Akhandananda, one of the direct disciples of Sri Ramakrishna, Vivekananda's brother monk. When Swami Vivekananda is preaching Vedanta in this country, Akhandananda Swami was walking a wandering monk in a district in Bengal called Murshidabad. And there was a famine. Famine was very natural for India every year. No food and hungry and rickety people dying out of scarcity of food. And that famine started. And Swami Akhandananda, this great Swami monk, he saw some orphan boys, Muslim orphan boys, and he wanted to serve them. He baked food, baked money from other people and started to help them. But he has no own home. He is a wandering monk where he will stay. So found some rich man's house, some courtyard outside and started that activity of serving these seven, eight small boys. He say. 9, 8, 7, 8, 6, 10, like that age group. And you can see how difficult for a monk who has renounced everything and now is looking after these boys of 6, 7, 8 years. And they have to be bathed, they have to be clean, they have to be fed. Everything is almost done like a mother. But he is not serving an orphan boy as we do by giving some money or giving some food. When he is bathing them, he is putting water on their head for bathing. And what he is saying? He is saying the same mantra what we do in our temple. When you do worship, we pour water with this mantra on Lord as if I am bathing the Lord. The same mantra he is using Sahasra Shisha Purusha Sahasra Aksha Sahasra Path Practical Vedanta, highest Vedanta putting into practice taking care of an orphan boy bathing him with the same mantra as we do in the temple for the Lord the Lord in the orphan Lord in the Muslim boy no Muslim, no Hindu it is Lord in that form of the child what a grand philosophy Vivekananda and Ramakrishna brought and is manifested to the children of Sri Ramakrishna. So this is, it is sir, many, astonishing to know. It is practical. It is possible. We can do also. You can do for your own son. You can do for your own daughter, child, someone you are serving. You can see I am serving not this boy, not this man, not this woman. But I am serving whom? God himself, who I meditate upon here. That's the practical application. That's why he said to make it manifest in every movement of life. Every movement of life. That's a great mission. And that mission is continuing its course through these different institutions centered, created by this order. That's why this organization first in the West where Swami Vivekananda started New York Center. Next came San Francisco Center. But Swamiji was going everywhere. Vivekananda was going everywhere and preaching this Vedantic message. He called his brother monks Swami Sharodananda and Swami Abhedananda and other direct disciples to come and then give this my same Vedantic message and still that same stream of Vedantic thought is percolating through these organizations. 
to these institutions, what we call Vedanta societies. And also in India, as I said, activity level has gone so much. But who will do this? We need some people who will be renunciate, who can dedicate their life. It is to be done. It needs tremendous sacrifice. If nothing great can be done without sacrifice. But these people, Swami Vivekananda said, if I get some hundred boys who can stand in the street and say, I don't want anything but God, I can change the thought process of the whole world, revolutionize the whole world. That means that dedication is necessary. And this organization is trying in its way to carry on that same message of divinity in soul, the purity of the Atman, and to serve God with eyes open, with eyes closed when you meditate, that same God, bring that God into awareness that we are serving the same God through our mother, brother, sister, friend, relations, whatever level we are mixing, it is we are dealing with God, God dealing with God. So that awareness, so that it becomes the theory, it is no, no more a theory, but it becomes a practical reality. So that's why in Indian activity, they are so much expanded in schools, colleges, hospitals, medicals, medical units, there's nursing training, and uplift of the women. Another contribution of this Ramakrishna's organization or Vivekananda mission is to uplift the women's condition. And how it is said, all over the world, that was the mistake that people didn't pay attention to the improvement of the women. And Swami Vivekananda wanted that the women should be like a nun. Not only man will be become a monk, but the any girl dedicated for this great purpose, for the good of all, for the salvation of oneself and the salvation of others, will embrace the path of total renunciation. It didn't happen during that time, but his will was there, and Vivekananda thought that it should be Holy Mother Sarada Devi with the center, and centering her, the women's organization will come. And now it has come out a dream in, in the centenary year of Sama Holy Mother, but in 1953, Sarada Mott, a women's organization, very highly educated girls, they are joining in the mana, in the convent and they are engaged in the same type of activity in uplifting the condition of the people, particularly they are focused on women, women education, orphanage. They are all training of different types so that this they can stand up on their feet and help and bring their spiritual awakening. That is the but this is special. It is a special which Swami Vivekananda is to be appreciated. That my plan, he said in one place, he gave a talk here in Shakespeare Club in Pasadena in January 27, 1900. There he said, My plans are therefore to reach this masses of India. The same work I want to do on parallel lines for women. And my principle is, each one helps himself. That means men should be free to take, take their own decision. Women should be free to take their own decision. And he says, my help is from a distance. As soon as they have begun, I wash my hands off. No man should dictate to a woman, nor a woman to a man. Each one is independent. Women will work out their own destinies much better too than men can ever do for themselves. But it is not the fact. You will read the history of the world in Catholic churches, in Buddhist monasteries. Women are second class citizens. Men are the top. But 
this organization what started Swami Vivekananda said no give them total freedom they will know much better how to do the development for their group men should not dictate what is good for the women so that's why this is the uniqueness of Swami Vivekananda he says quote all the mischief to women has come because men undertook to shape the destiny of women. I do not want to start with any such initial mistake. Rather, he gave the total freedom. And really, it is such a beautiful example in the society to see that Sarada Mott, the women's organization, tremendous activity is going on. Uh, and they have a center in Sydney only. Many uh, places there are people here in America, they are asking to bring Sarada Mott here for the women, but they are not, number of renunciates are not much. Uh, everywhere that is the problem. Who will give up their life for God? No, Boys and girls, they will have their own goal, immediate goals of life. No, But, but anyhow, whatever they are, they are doing wonderful work and preaching the same Vedantic principle, leading the sp same spiritual life of self-realization. Uh, you know that probably you watch on YouTube. Are you YouTube? Of course you see. Uh, Sai Dibbananda Prana. Dibbananda Prana. Just type YouTube. See how bright, brilliant girls are coming up and preaching Vedanta. You will be moved to see that. Divya Nanda Prana. D I V Y A N A N D A. Divya Nanda Prana. They are preaching Vedanta. They are running high schools and colleges. They are serving the destitutes. They are running the hospital centers. Totally independent of any, any support from any man to dictate on them. It is there. And they are spiritually, they are giving initiation, initiation mantra, and other things. That, that is the mission of Ramakrishna. That is the mission of Vivekananda. And we are, we are fortunate, you all also fortunate to be a part of this great mission, this international mission, this mission of embracing everyone in this path of self-development and leading to the path of freedom and ultimate conquest of our inner self and finding that one which is behind the manifold. Thank you. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you for the talk. So if you have any question, you can start. Hi, Swami. There's a lot of talk about evil in the world these days. This seems to me it's just egos who've uh, gotten worked somehow. That, uh, I, don't, I don't believe evil is an entity. What are, what are your thoughts on this? Evil, yes. Evil is uh, an entity or not? Uh, actually, Dharmadas says that evil is not an entity. Actually, we also think that evil is not an entity. Rather, less light is called dark. Vedanta always positive. So what is evil? Less good. <laughs> we have an expectation that, that, that this much is good. Below is evil. Above is extraordinary. No? So actually... There is only one reality, and that reality is Brahman, that reality is Atman, that reality is the truth, that reality is that infinite ocean of light, what Swami Vivekananda just I quoted. And when that manifestation is darker, cloud has covered that, then we call it evil. So in Vedantic perspective, there is no evil. Lesser truth, rather, Swami Vivekananda said in his language, 
we travel from lower truth to higher truth. Lesser truth to higher truth. Truth is truth. Only when it is not seen in its full glory, we say it is bad. And it, as much darkness comes, so much we say it is worst. It is evil. It is dangerous. So I think the truth is the only thing. Ignorance and our ignorance and our manifestation of the purity of the soul less manifests as evil. Om Shanti 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 Hari Hi Om Tat Sat Sri Ram Krishna Panamastu We'll, I'll be going to stand there to greet you all.